Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about permissions. An Android app runs in kind of a sandbox mode and it cannot just access everything from the system what it wants. Instead, if you need to access something your app is not allowed to do by default, then you need to define that your app needs the permission by the user to perform this action. And there are two types of permissions. One are less sensitive and the other ones are more sensitive permissions. The less sensitive permissions is, for example, if you want to use internet, so if your app needs internet access, or if it wants to read the external storage. And the more sensitive permissions are, for example, if your app wants to access the device's location or wants to write to the external storage. And if your app needs those more sensitive permissions, then they will only work if you explicitly request them from the user and he accepts them in your app at runtime. And the less sensitive permissions don't need that explicit acceptance by the user. Instead, you just need to define them in your app that you need those permissions, but then you're fine to go and the user will be notified that your app needs those permissions when he installs it, but he does not need to accept them at runtime. And in this tutorial, I will show you this um, how this works in a detailed example with several different permissions. This will be a little bit more code, but after this video you know everything you need to know about permissions. So I will add four permissions in this video, which is internet, writing to external storage, accessing the location and accessing the location in background. To actually define those permissions, we need to go to our manifests file. So Make sure to open your app folder here and click on the manifest folder. And then we need to go above that application tag here. So right here we need to add our permissions. And we do it by open a tag and writing uses permission, not permission here. We need to use the uses permission tag here. And press enter and Android Studio will automatically insert that name property here. And here you can scroll through that list and see which kind of permissions there even exist. And most of the times it's clear what they are needed for. In our case, like I said, I want to add the internet permission. So type internet here, press enter and close that tag. And the internet permission is a less sensitive permission. So you just need to define it like that in the manifest and then you're fine to go, then you can use um, and you can access the internet from within your app. And the user will see when he installs your app that your app needs internet access. And if he accepts it once, then your app can always use internet. However, the other permissions I want to add, which are writing to external storage and the location permissions, um, need explicit acceptance by the user. So, and we need to define them in the manifest. So let's write users permission again and then write external storage, close that tag off, use this permission again. Now I want to use the um, location permission, which is, which is access course location. That is the location permission in the foreground. So if your app is currently running and the user sees your app direct and is in your activity, then you can access the location but if the user minimizes your app, then you cannot. And actually before Android Q, he could, because before Android Q, we only needed to ask once for that location and we only needed that access course location um, permission. But for Android Q, we now need to explicitly ask for foreground and background permission. So let's finally add users permission, background, access background location here and close that tag off. So those are all the permissions I wanted to add here for this tutorial. As I said, for the internet permission, we are fine to go now, but the other ones we need to explicitly request from within our app. And to do that, I want to go into our activity main XML file here and add a button. So I want to request those permissions when the user clicks on that button, set the width to wrap content and the height to. I will set the ID of that button to button request permissions and the text 
to request permissions to. Close that tag off, go to the design editor, click on the button and constrain it horizontally and vertically in parent. Next, let's go into our main activity.kt file. And here I want to add three functions that just check if the user accepted those three permissions we need to, we need its acceptance. So let's write private func um, has write external storage permission. And that just returns activity compit, activity compit dot check self permission. So that is the function that checks whether the user accepted a specific permission in the past or currently. So let's use that function. This function takes the context so we can refer to this with this. And here we need to specify which kind of permission should be checked for. And we can refer to all available permissions by writing manifest and make sure to select that Android one, not Java util jar. Then Android Studio will import that here. Then we write manifest.permission. And here you can see all the available permissions. In this case, it's write external storage. And this just returns an integer that either says that this permission was accepted before or was not accepted. And we can compare that integer. So we can check if it is equal to package manager dot permission granted. So that is just to make the return type of that a little bit more readable. So we don't have to compare it with, let's say zero. I don't know what the result of that will be, but that makes it a little bit more readable that we can check if our check self permission function returns a, per, uh, a result that is equal to permission granted. So let's copy that function and paste it two times below for our other permissions. One time for the location permission in foreground. So has location foreground permission. And of course, change the permission here. Access course location. And this one will be has location background permission. And swap this out for access background location. Then I want to add a function here, which is also a private function. And that function is now used to request the permission. So request permissions. And whenever we want to request several permissions, or actually we always need to define the permissions as an array. So even though we only have one permission that we want to request, then we need to put it into a string array because those permission types here are all strings. And I want to check here in this request permissions function whether the user accepted those single permissions here before. And if he did not, then I want to add that permission string here to that list, convert it to an array, and at the end request all permissions that were not accepted before. So let's start by creating a mutable list var permissions to request is equal to mutable list of string, which is currently empty. And then we can check if has write external storage permission. So that will execute this function here and check if we have that permission. So it either returns true or false. And we want to check if it has not that permission. And in that case, we want to add that permission to our permissions to request list. So dot add manifest dot permission dot write external storage. Then we can copy that if statement again and paste it two times below. Check the second time for foreground look um, has location foreground permission. So make sure you have that exclamation mark. So we check if the user did not accept that foreground permission. 
In that case, we want to add um, access course location to the list. And if the user does not have the location background permission, we want to add access background location to the list. So after those three if statements here, we know that this list contains all the permissions that the user hasn't accepted before, or it might also be that he accepted them, but then revoked them again. That's also possible in Android. So let's check if our permissions to request list is not empty. So if there are permissions that we want to request here, and in that case, we want to request all those permissions inside of that list. So we write activity compet dot request permissions. Here we need to provide the context again. In this case, it's very important that you provide the activity context and not the application context. So make sure to refer to it with this. The next parameter are the permissions as an array of strings. And we currently only have those permissions as a list, but that's not difficult to convert that to an array. So let's write permissions to request dot to typed array. So that will just take our mutable list and convert it to a string array. And finally, we need to define a request code. I will just add zero here and you will understand in the next step what this request code means and what it is for. So currently we have defined that function that requests all those permissions that we need for our app. But we want to add a function that is called when the user accepts or declines all those permissions. So if we go through those permissions and either accepts them or declines them, and then we want to um, be able to check in that function if he accepted particular permission or not. And to do that, there is a function that we can override inside of an activity class, like our main activity, which is on permissions request result, I think. So we can just write on permission on request permissions result it is. So make sure you type that and it's that override fun. Then press enter and Android Studio will automatically insert that function. You can ignore that super implementation here. That just means that this function will call the implementation of that function from the superclass activity. So just leave it there. You always have such a super function here when you overwrite an activity function. So just ignore it and write your code after it. Now we want to check if, and here we have that request code parameter. And that request code is the same that we entered here, which is the zero, and it is used to differentiate between several requested permissions. So let's say we wanted to, we only want to request the location permission here. And on another time in the app, we want to request the right external storage permission. Then we need to differentiate between which permission was requested. And we do that by giving them different request codes. In this case, it doesn't really matter because we only have one request permissions function here. But if we request several permissions, um, not at the same time, like we do it here, then we need to give them different request codes to differentiate between them in our on request permissions result function. So let's just check here if the request code is equal to zero. So if that is actually um, this request here, in that case, we can now check which permissions were accepted by the user and which not. And you can see here is an int array of grant results. And that is exactly the array that contains those package manager permission granted integers. So that is actually an integer, just a placeholder for an integer to make it more readable. And we can loop through that grant results array and check if a particular permission was granted or not. So let's actually check inside of that if statement here, if our grant results is not empty. And then we can use a simple for loop here for i in grant results dot indices. So it will just start at zero and go through grant results until it's length minus one. So that is the same as I would write grant results dot size minus one. 
um, actually as a range from zero to grant results at size minus one, but that's not really good code. You can just write grant results dot indices. So in this case, we want to check if our i, our grant results at index i, is equal to package manager dot permission granted. And if it was granted, then we can just use our log, log d, need to import that log, so make sure it is underlined, and press alt plus enter to import it. I choose as a tag main activity, or we can even choose something like permissions request, so we can easily find it in the log cat later. And here I want to print the permissions array. So that is this array here, which just contains our permissions that we requested. So if our permissions array at the index of i was granted, and then we just want to print um, that it was granted, so that the permissions at index of i granted, and that's it. So I hope that did not confuse you. What we did here was just we loop through that grant results array and we check for each grant result if that is equal to permission granted. So if that particular permission was granted and if it is, then we know that this, per this permission that was granted is at the index of i in that permissions array here. And then we can simply print that this particular permission was granted. So let's scroll up here and add an on click listener to our button. So let's write button request permissions dot set on click listener. And here we just need to call our request permissions function. And then we can click on lock at below to actually see what happens here. And I will search for permissions request here, which is our tag below here. So we can easily find our log messages when we run that app. So let's do that. All right. And when I now click on request permissions here, then you can see allow tutorials, which is my app name to access this device's location. So we now have that option to allow it all the time. So also in the background, then we have the option to allow only while using the app, which is the foreground permission, or we are able to deny that permission. So let's say we accept it and allow it all the time. Then it requests from us to accept that external storage permission to write to it, allow tutorials to access photos and media on your device. And let's say I deny that permission now. Then you can see now in our log cat that our access course location was granted and the access background location was granted, but not our right to external storage permission. But when I run the app again and click on that request permissions button again, now it only asks to accept the permission right to external storage because we already accepted the permission for location. And let's say we allow it now, then it will print right external storage permission granted. So that is really cool. And I hope that was not too much code that confused you, but that's actually everything you need to know about permissions. And yeah, if you have any questions, then don't mind asking them in the comments so I can answer them. See you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye bye.